This week on Supercars Talk, Uncle Barry's not happy with NASCAR bound Shane Van Gisbergen. The big news this week is that Jamie Winkup has put his hat into the ring as a replacement for Shane Van Gisbergen. Uh, it was all but confirmed this weekend that Shane will be heading stateside next year to chase his NASCAR dreams. When he was uh, asked whether he would be over there full time next year, he uh, the comment was something about uh, maybe not full time but a partial campaign. Um, yeah, so he's he's off. Uh, Jamie's said he's up for the gig. Um, I, d I, I don't know what the full story is on that one, but uh, if it was me, honestly, if you couldn't put Richie Stanaway in that car, uh, which I assume that Sandown and Bathurst will be a, a big um, dress rehearsal for him, if you couldn't, I would go very left of field. Now, this is gonna inflame a lot of people. Uh, I'd give Nick Perkett another shot. Uh, he proved what he could do at BJR, and uh, yeah, I think getting him into one of those Triple Eight cars, it could really turn everything around. I mean, look at the results Brock Feeney's having, and not to say Brock's not a brilliant driver, etc., but he is only a second year driver. Usually it takes guys quite a few years to get their feet in the category, and uh, if you look at what Bryce Forward's doing now, he really did nothing at Walk and Shores for those kind of two years. He's really now, it's it's nearly like he's started from scratch again at BJR, and he's like, you know, what you'd expect kind of from a second year driver now this year with his second year at BJR. So I would, uh, I'd throw a career lifeline at Nick Perkett, even if it's a 12 months contract, see how it goes. If it doesn't work, go somewhere else. But, uh, I think the upsides with Percat, if you can get it to work, the upsides are really, really high. Um, of course, it, it may be a disaster, but you've still got Feeney there to get the results. The other big news this week was that Simona Di Silvestro and Kai Allen have been confirmed as the pilots of the DJR Bathurst only wildcard. Uh, they won't be partaking at Sandown as well, like the uh, super cheap auto triple eight one will be. Uh, no news on what's happening with the Blanchard one and who's steering that, but the DJR one will be number 98 in reference to the Shell V-Power 98 octane fuel uh, that we all love chucking in our car because it costs the premium. Um, it looks like uh, a, lo a lot of their normal sponsors will be on the car because they were mentioned in the press release. There was no mention of Repco though, which I was a little bit surprised on that one. Um, Harvey Norman was mentioned in the press release too. So they've been a long time supporter of uh, Simona in this category. So expect them to be on that car as well. Now, before I get into the actual review of the racing this weekend, I'd just like to say, how good was the actual racing over the weekend? Uh, we had a bit of tire deg, proper pit stops, things like that. People were running side by side for multiple corners. Uh, yeah, a, a bit of Rubbins racing is good. Sometimes uh, the old bump and run, probably not the best thing out there. Uh, but I just thought, this is where Gen 3 is really at. Uh, the parody thing depending on who you talk to, is it fixed or not? Uh, but if you, if you looked at the results, obviously some of the teams are really struggling, but there was guys actually at the front. And then you look and you're like, well, there is some shitty Camaros at the back. So, you know, the guys who aren't really good, they're gonna be at the back anyway, no matter what we do with parody. So, um, it was, it was nice to see a bit more of a mix up the front though, uh, from the different brand lines. Uh, is, it, is it totally fixed? It's probably too early to tell at the moment. Uh, probably need a couple more rounds of this before you can make a true assessment. But I know uh, Anton did end up chasing down Feeney at the end of the race. And uh, I like uh, the commentators were on about, you know, uh, I think it was Scafey continued on about how, you know, Anton had younger tyres and he's going to catch Feeney because of the younger tyres. But I'm saying the thing, I'm sure they were the two to stop first. And uh, yeah, then I think it was Neil that uh, corrected him and said, no, no, 
they stopped on the same lap so they have the same age tyres. Uh, so that was good to see that Anton just, you know, didn't go backwards on that. He actually had better tyre life than what Feeney did. So into the review of the weekend. As customary, we do Blanchard's first because they are last in the championship and they are not going anywhere quickly from that. Um, they were there. I remember seeing Hazelwood on the TV once because he crashed into a hill, I think it was. Um, yeah, they they were there. Grove Racing. Uh, Saturday night, just the, the question marks. What happened to Reynolds? Why was there no replays? Uh, it was just, it was very, very strange, that situation. What was going on? Sunday morning, then we found out that they had a right front suspension failure. Uh, he shot off the track there really, really fast at that point of the circuit uh, and hit that wall very hard. Depending on which commentator and at what point of the day you were listening to it, um, I think they were there from anything from about 3 a.m. to about uh, 11 a.m. the next morning, just continued working right through and then put the car straight out on the track for qualifying. Uh, but yeah, the, the boys from Grove had a really long night there. Um, Dave qualified really well on the Sunday, but then yeah, blew the tyres off it, I guess, and went backwards. Payne uh, didn't even crack the top 20 over the weekend, I don't think. Um, 24th and 23rd were Payne's results over the weekend. Um, really, uh, th these guys were kind of, you know, knocking on the front, uh, very competitive at the start of the year, and they've really kind of lost their way. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure what's going on there, but uh, yeah, they, they're going backwards very quickly at the moment. Premi Air Racing. It's funny, it felt like these guys were nowhere all weekend. Slade's results, sixth and twelfth. Sixth. Um, yeah, uh, Golding was twelfth and seventeenth. Not quite as impressive, but solid midfield really. And uh, yeah, they're ju just kind of solid midfield. And that is kind of showing now, you know, they're in front of both of the B teams in the team's championship and they're in front of Groves now. Uh, they're just chipping away at it. They're not spectacular, but not doing too badly. Matt Stone Racing, Jack LeBrock. Ah, uh, yeah, <laughs> wow. Uh, he just continues to impress all weekend. Um, Hill actually qualifying is really getting strong for him. He doesn't seem to be able to last during the races. Uh, Sunday's one though, not entirely his fault. There was that issue in the pits that did not help his cause. Uh, I think there's a little bit of covering up there with uh, how far back he went, uh, blaming it all on the pit stop. But um, yeah, Jack LeBrock, Ten, it, top 10, both of the races, uh, fourth on Saturday night. Just really impressive, really, really solid qualifying. Uh, a bad race for him now is, you know, 10th. Uh, he's just really looking strong. I'm really impressed with what he's doing. Uh, I did question Todd Hazelwood at the start of the year whether that was the right move. And uh, yeah, you'd have to be questioning yourself if you'd uh, jumped from Matt Stone Racing last year over to Blanchard's at the moment, because uh, yeah, they're, they're really headed in the right direction. Dick Johnson Racing. They're still this far back in the championship. Um, yeah, Saturday, just no pace. Davison continued to have no pace on Sunday as well. And on whatever they did, uh, that car was a hell of a lot better on Sunday. He was actually able to pass people. He kept the tyres on it longer than what Feeney did and got himself there on the podium. Uh, yeah, what what was looking like a really, really another dismal weekend for these guys. Anton kind of, yeah, the, his, his side of the garage pulled it out of their um, arse or whatever on Sunday and uh, yeah, really kind of uh, saved the weekend for them. Uh, Davison was 16th and 18th in the two races and actually drops out of the top 10 in the championship now. Uh, yeah, they, they still need a bit of work there. Walkinshaw and Dreddy United. Uh, Mostert is at the front of the pack while Perkat is at the back of the pack. Uh, tale of two sides, this team. So if Chaz could actually qualify a bit better. The results could be a hell of a lot better. Um, Saturday, he qualified ninth, finished second. Ninth to second. Um, and then Sunday, he went from 16th to 7th. Uh, that, 
yeah, imagine if he could qualify in the top five, uh, he probably still wouldn't win because of Erebus and Triple Eight. But imagine the firepower he would have without having to pass all those cars to kind of get towards the front. Um, Percat cracked the top 20 on Sunday with a 19th. Team 18. I honestly nearly forgot to put these guys in the report. Uh, I just, I don't recall seeing them on TV all weekend. And the results were 9th and 10th, 9th and 11th. Uh, Frosty was the 9th in both the races, with Pi in 10th and 11th in the races. But I don't know what to say about them because I didn't see them on TV really. Tickford. Courtney actually moved forward in both the races, um, but because he qualified quite poorly, uh, it was twin 13th places uh, were his results. Waters. <sighs> so he should have been on the podium on Saturday. Unsafe release. My question on this is, um, yeah, Feeney hit the brakes. They didn't show any footage, so did he actually have to hit the brakes? Or is this a, oh, this car coming, I touch the brake, and then they get a penalty now? Because um, in the past, I think we've had situations where people have braked, there hasn't been contact, and it's been, oh, play on, there was no contact, so it's not an unsafe release. You're like, well, the car had to stop in the lane. Um, if Feeney lost time, it would have been so minimal. Um, then you kind of, so Triple Eight go through the process. They're the, they're the ones who brought it to the stewards, etc. And uh, yeah, so Waters gets his penalty because of reasons. Um, then you kind of go on the Triple Eight side of things. Well, is it a bit suck eggs then when you get penalized later on in the race for something? Um, yeah, you, you like to pick every little thing out of every other little team out there. Uh, yeah, so... <sighs> it. It's a tough one, that one, but now will we see if there is any, like all the guys, oh, we'll just, you know, dab the brake pedal as you're coming into the pit and they'll get an unsafe release uh, because, you know, you've had to brake heavily. Uh, yeah, it didn't, it's hard. I would have loved them to have shown the actual in-car footage and where the gaps were because obviously that angle on the pit lane, you couldn't really see how close it was. Whereas, you know, if they showed the, proper footage out of Feeney's car and how close it actually was, maybe we could judge a little bit better whether it was unsafe or, you know, whether the, there is justification to complain about him getting this penalty. Um, ended up anyway, Waters finished fifth and sixth over the two races, so quite a solid weekend because uh, they, they haven't had great results at uh, Sydney Motorsport Park in the past, so good to see Waters up the front there. He was in that front battle in both races. Um, Randall and Fraser, on the other hand, couldn't even crack the top 20 over the weekend. Brad Jones Racing. Um, why didn't they stick to the one-stop strategy on Saturday night? Now, okay, then they would have had older tyres than the people around them, but they would have had track position. By stopping, you lose. They gave away all the track position that they had but they'd also have the added benefit of just having the same age tyres as everyone around them. At least they would have had track position with, like, granted they would have been on old tyres, but they would have had really good track position. Uh, yeah, you're, you're dropping back to whatever, 16th or whatever it was. It's not like he had some, you know, Red Bull Formula 1 car underneath him. He just had his normal Brad Jones Racing RJ Batteries car. It wasn't like he was just going to shoot back to the front. Uh, yeah, the, according to the commentators, which sometimes with their, um, their they turn it up to 11, uh, hyping up, you know, the, the pit stop gaps and things like that. Uh, but the general consensus seems to be that Jaime was the effective leader. So he would have probably, when the safety car came out for Reynolds crash and that, um, he, he would have still been first. So maybe the, the tires weren't that old. Maybe he drops back to fifth or something. He was P nowhere on Saturday night in the end. Maybe, yeah, you know, roll the dice and have a crack at it. Um, 
Sunday we nearly got to see a full BJR front row and then Triple Eight came in and uh, yeah just uh, wrecked that party that they were just about to have um, but they did end up finishing second and fifth in the race forward I, this is probably nearly a breakout weekend for him um, it's as, as I said earlier this kind of now feels like this is his second year in the category where he's really finding his feet those kind of two years at Walking Shores, um, that wasn't the guy that we saw at the end of his, his Super 2 career. Uh, yeah, he just kind of went nowhere, and it nearly seems like this has been a, a reset at BJR. And uh, yeah, he's working himself forward. He's now cracked into the top 10 of the championship. Um, and the other two in the team, I've actually got something to report on these two. They finished 15th and 16th on Sunday. Now, unfortunately, Macca had SVG'd Smith during the race and copped himself a five, uh, yeah, five second time penalty for it. So he dropped from 15th to 18th, but that meant Smith got promoted to 15th, which because he actually had the fastest lap of the race, meant he got the bonus points for the fastest lap. Uh, so yeah, um, some, may, maybe they were happy about that penalty for Macca down at Brad Jones Racing. Triple eight, uh, so um, yeah. Shane, a typical qualify badly race up to the front on uh, Saturday. Uh, it was a bump and run. What, what else do you say? He got penalised for one finally. Uh, he's not happy about it. He made that perfectly clear when the, after qualifying on Sunday, he got himself pole and some kind of comment straight away like, oh, let's see them take this away from me. And then after the race, uh, there was, you know, oh, I needed to finish five seconds ahead of Jaime so that, you know, when they penalise me, then I'd still win. And it's like, come on, buddy. Like, how many times are you going to complain yeah, it happened. Yeah, it sucked. But oh, you've just qualified on pole. You went and won the race, and that's all you can focus on. His his mind. He's he's overseas already. He, he's kind of switched off. He's now third in the championship. He's really closed the gap up. But I, yeah, uh, performances on Sunday say to me he's still in this fight. But then all the stuff around it. Is he mentally still in this fight? Uh, yeah, there's... I don't, I don't know. Um, Feeney, very, very quiet weekend. 11th on Saturday and 4th on Sunday. If that's a very quiet weekend from a second year driver, well, uh, yeah, Feeney's doing an excellent job. Although he does drop from 3rd to 4th in the points um, after... Shane's performances over the weekend. Erebus, well, uh, Saturday, that was a very convincing win from Brody, and uh, Brown finished on the podium too. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, Sunday, things weren't quite as good for the boys. Uh, Brown obviously getting run off, trying to go four wide into turn one. Uh, he, he was the unfortunate one to really lose out on that one, but at least he did um, keep going and uh, ended up 14th so yeah um really minimized the damage on that one it could have been a lot worse if he'd actually found you know kind of the wall and not finished the race um Kostecki, he faded back in that race considering how strong he was on saturday night he really did fade they probably went in the wrong setup direction um came in eighth in the end so not really bad but when you're competing with the triple eight guys that are you know constantly kind of in that top five really um the biggest issue for the Erebus guys over the weekend though was uh yeah Barry's uh expletive uh ridden rant uh after Brown got hit on that last lap Saturday night uh on live tv he copped himself a five thousand dollar fine for his troubles on that one so that's my Sydney Motorsport part <coughs> So that's my Sydney Motorsport Park wrap up. Uh, let me know down in the comments, did you enjoy the racing over the weekend? Uh, yeah, I d do you think the parody stuff is finalized now or do you think there's still more to go? Uh, yeah, I, I was quite excited by the racing over the weekend. I, I think that Gen 3, maybe we still need a little bit of parody tweaking, but the, the actual racing I'm really happy with that 
stuff is actually heading in the right direction. I think once we fix up a few little bits, uh, yeah, th this is definitely a step up over Gen 2 for me because it is, some of the changes that were supposed to happen have actually happened. Yeah, especially on that racing front, I think that is a lot better watching the cars side by side. Um, but yeah, let me know down in the comments and uh, yeah, what did you think of the penalties over the weekend? But until next time, I'm still Dave and I'll catch you later. <laughs>